In this tutorial, I will show you how to paint these rustic daisies. This is a faux wood background on an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas. The colors you'll need are titanium white, burnt sienna, neutral gray, value five. Those are the three colors for the background. And you'll also need a three quarter inch flat brush. So we're gonna be painting the entire background first. So I'm calling this a faux wood background because we're gonna create an impression of this old rustic wooden panel thing going on in the background. So you're gonna um, wet your brush first and kind of pat it dry. And um, you saw me dip it in the brown and dip the corners in the gray and the white. So that's triple loading the brush and you're gonna paint up and down strokes. So what is happening is the, um, the three colors are kind of blending together on the canvas and I'm doing all up and down strokes to create this effect. And um, you will find that yours is going to look slightly different from mine because the colors are kind of leading the way. They're um, mixing themselves, so you're gonna have areas that might have a little bit more white, a little bit more gray. If you like um, the wood to be a little bit lighter, you can add more white to it. If you like the look of the gray, you can add more streaks of gray. So you can still kind of control it, but a lot of it is just kind of the colors are blending themselves, so there's not really a whole lot of control going on. Okay, so this video is speeding up and basically as I go and reload the brush, I'm just dipping it in the brown and I'm dipping the corners in the gray and the white and I'm doing all up and down strokes. I'm not changing the direction or anything. I'm keeping the consistency of the paint pretty, um, for the most part, consistent. So I'm not doing some areas that are thicker, some are thinner, so I'm trying to keep the amount of thickness that I'm doing um, pretty consistent all throughout. You may find that at some point your brush, your brush feels um, pretty dry. So you can dip your brush in a little bit of water to get the paint to flow some more. So in the beginning we dipped our brush in the water and we didn't dry it all the way. It was pretty moist um, but by now it, it might be too dry and then when you get to that point you might the paint might feel really feathery and it not spreading as much as we want to so that is okay to dip it um, back into the water just uh, remember we want to keep the paint pretty consistent so we don't want to get too watery I know it's kind of tempting because it goes faster with the more water you apply to it but we want consistency we don't want it to be thick and then all of a sudden we have um, areas that are watery and then you see me going back here so I'm just adding some fun um, streaks of other of uh, some brown and um, white and gray just a few streaks here and there just to kind of give it some variety we have a big streak of white in there and I kind of toned it down with some more brown and um, so the video speeding up here and again I did not paint this fast so um, pause the video if you're painting along with me right now in this video definitely do not paint this fast because this is a speed version right here okay so when you are done with the wood part so I painted the sides that was not recorded but that's what I did I painted the sides and you want to wait for that background to dry just a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but mostly dry because we're going to do divide the wood up here and we don't want the brown to be too wet, um, but it doesn't have to be completely 100% dry. So I'm using the color Mars Black and I'm using a flat brush. This is a number 12 flat brush and I'm going to divide my wood into panels here. I'm going to do a line right in the middle and I'm not using a ruler. You can see how not good I am at making straight lines. 
I can't paint a straight line to save my life. Um, but I, um, I kind of liked the look of the, uh, made it the freehand look so that's why I didn't use a ruler so if you want to use a ruler by all means the t-square ruler really helps for this step um, so what I'm doing I divided it in half and then I'm going to divide it in um, half again so there's going to be four panels so I divided essentially I divided it into quarters so a, a vertical line and I'm using the the tip of my brush so the flat brush on its side with the Mars black okay and then I'm going to make some horizontal staggered lines uh, to make it look like there's panels. So I'm just using the tip of the brush to make the horizontal line and you can see how crooked my horizontal lines are here too. And then I'm going to create some um, false looking nails in the panel. So I'm just using the round brush. And I'm kind of kind of twist that brush there to get it to a nice point. I do that when I'm going to um, paint dots. So you have your round brush, and when you twist it on your palette, it makes that the paint go right to the point, and it makes that point of the round brush form. So I'm doing. Um, I did one nail on the, this panel, and then I did uh, double nails on some of the other panels. A very minor detail that you hardly even notice in the end of this painting but it makes it look kind of like these are wood panels a very simplified version of what a wood panel painting would look like okay so now my painting is completely dried I actually used a blow dryer to dry my painting and I have my traceable this is a mason jar uh, traceable and I have that in my traceable library. And if you did my uh, lightning bug mason jar painting, it is the exact same traceable for it, only I am cropping it. So this, um, the mason jar is only halfway up the canvas. It's cut in half and it's on the very bottom. So I'm not doing the full mason jar, I'm just doing the bottom. And there's a sheet of white graphite paper underneath. So. Um, this is a regular pencil and I'm going to trace over the mason jar and it will transfer to the canvas. So the white graphite paper, because the painting is dark in color, the white graphite paper is um, optimal so that you can see the drawing. Okay, so the next step I'm going to do is outline the mason jar with paint. I drew it, now I'm going to outline it with paint. And I'm going to use the two colors, titanium white and primary blue, and a number four round brush. So that same brush that we used to do the little nails in the panels, it's the same brush. And um, so I have the, the two colors and I'm just going to kind of double load my brush, but I'm going to kind of swirl it on the canvas. So I have a swirl of white and primary blue on my brush. And what's going to happen is when I paint, I'm going to get an uh, inconsistent color of the white and blue. It's going to kind of change colors here when I paint because the brush will pick up on the blue and the white depending on how the stroke goes and you'll see what I mean here in a second. Um, so basically everything I drew with the mason jar um, when I transferred it I am going to draw um, paint over those lines so um, with the blue and white. So some of those lines are more bluish some are more white because of how I'm loading my brush. Okay, when you are done outlining the jar, you want to make your water clear again. So freshen your water up, my magic editing skills right there, and uh, we're gonna do the daisies. So um, you need the colors titanium white and cad yellow deep. So those two colors I loaded on my palette and you'll need your number four round brush. Make sure that is all rinsed off. Very important about the water um, being clear because we're going to um, these light, light colors. We have the white, the yellow, and the daisies. We don't want any yucky water mixing with the colors, making them look darker 
when they should be bright. So, okay, so what I'm doing, I double loaded my round brush in both of those, so the swirl thing, the double load, um, with the yellow and the white, and I'm painting two circles um, basically they're just kind of um, different heights so one is lower closer to the jar one is up high and I'll make this one kind of the same height as the other one maybe a tiny bit higher so three circles that are kind of staggered at different heights these are the centers of the daisies the reason why I'm doing the white with the yellow is the yellow would not show up um, it would show up, but it would be too see-through because white or yellow is such a translucent color. So adding the white in it makes it so it's more opaque. Okay, so now I'm going to completely rinse my brush and do the petals of the daisy. So this is just titanium white. I'm still using the four round brush and I'm going to paint daisy petals. So um, a very basic petal shape and this is going to take some time but it's super fun and you're just going to paint that all the way around that circle this is my first layer of petals and um it's the yellow is not dry yet here for me so um, you want that petal to be touching the yellow but we, you just want to be kind of careful that you're not dragging the yellow with the petal so just try to get it as close as possible and then um, since these daisies are facing um, forward facing the viewer uh, all of the petals are kind of the same length um, just kind of estimate that so they're going all the way around the circle and they're about the same length so this right here is the simplified version of the daisy and you can leave it simplified um, but I'm going to take this a step further and I'm actually going to layer on some more petals so these petals are overlapping the petals that I originally did so I'm doing the another um, layer of paint with the white and they were overlapping the first set of petals that I did okay so I'm gonna do the the same thing for this daisy so do the first um, set of petals that go all the way around the circle and it might overlap the other daisy and that's fine And then do, um, I kind of did that as I went along, do the petals that are kind of overlapping the first set of petals. So super simplified. And then I'm going to do um, the one over here on the left. And um, when I did this painting, I decided that this daisy needs to be... Um, like a different angle so I decided to um, turn the middle part into um, more of a dome shape here so I rinse my brush off and um, I grab the yellow again and I'm going to form that the center circle into more of a half circle dome shape so it looks like that this daisy is kind of um, on its side so the it's that center is on the top from what we view and the petals are kind of going behind it. So that's uh, how you would do it if you wanted your daisy to look like that. And then I'm gonna add a few more petals in here with the white. Okay, so we have a different angle for this particular daisy. Okay, 
So these are, this is very basic um, version of these flowers. And um, I decided to add a little bit of shadowing on the center part of the daisy. So I grabbed the primary blue and I'm just making these little lines that are in the middle, um, the bottom of the petals surrounding that circle with just the primary blue. So going from that circle and just kind of dragging that blue kind of upwards to give just a little tiny bit of shadowing in the center part of, da of the daisy. So it's not just all white. Um, again, this is completely optional. This is actually something that I decided to um, improvise um, while I was recording this video because the original version that I painted didn't have any blue in the centers, but I decided, oh, I felt, I feel kind of daring. I'm going to add some more details into this. So you decide if you like that or not, if you like, if you want to go detailed or if you like the simple version, so it's up to you. And um, so next I'm adding a little bit of dark in the center part. So that's the burnt sienna. And I'm just going to do little dots in the center on the yellow parts of the daisies with the burnt sienna. So little dots, um, especially uh, kind of outlining that circle part so that that part where that petal and that circle me is kind of a darker area. So I emphasize the dots surrounding that part right there. And then you can grab the yellow again and kind of go back over the yellow. And when that yellow kind of blends with the brown, it creates um, some more color variation in and texture. We're doing a lot of texture right here with that center part. Hey, I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to go back and um, touch up the, the shading here. So. Um, with the white and I'm going to do another layer of petal and I'm just going to kind of tone that blue down a little bit. So basically kind of blending that blue with the white by adding another um, layer of paint where that the white part of the petals are. So you see that blue kind of fade back and the blue is mostly right there in the center next to that yellow. So same thing on this flower, just like you're painting another layer over the petal and um, there we go. Okay, so done with the daisies and now we're gonna do the stem. And I did the stem with Hooker's Green and um, the four round brush, the number four round brush and titanium white. So I double dipped my brush in the green and the white and I'm painting this stem. So I'm gonna start in um, the jar and I'm gonna go up. So if it's easier for you to start from the flower and go down to the jar, that's that's fine. It doesn't matter if you start up or down. I just decided to start down. Um, the way I did my stems is they kind of um, bundle up in the middle on the bottom. So um, the stem can kind of go any direction, but it meets all three of the stems meet together in the middle on the bottom in the jar and then don't worry about um, the fact that they're in the jar I overlapped that stem over the jar I wasn't worried about um, oh it's got to look like it's in the jar so I can't paint over this line so don't worry about that yet we will uh, fix that later when we go back and detail the jar so all I'm doing, all I'm worrying about is my stem getting inside the jar here. So that green and the white kind of vary together when you double load the brush. Um, if, if you don't 
if you don't feel as controlled with the round brush, you can also try it with that 12 flat brush. When we did the paneling in the background for the wood, you can use that on its side and that'll give you a little bit more control with the stem. I know you kind of need a steady hand when you have a round brush in your hand. Okay, next I'm going to do the um, baby breath stems, the um, other flower that shows up in this painting with the little white dots. And this is same color, the hooker's green dipped in the titanium white, but these are gonna kind of branch off like I'm painting tree branches here, essentially. And um, so, so they're going, they're, they're bunched up together with the daisies and they go up and then they kind of droop down and branch off. Okay, I'm gonna do this exact same thing on the left side. Okay, so rinse that brush off completely. Get Make sure all that green is off so that we can get the white. And um, basically, so for th these are baby breath, um, and you're just gonna paint little white dots all in a bunch of bundles on um, those kind of stems that you painted. So they're drooping down and kind of sticking up in some areas, but mostly drooping down. So all I'm doing are little white dots and uh, this part takes a little bit of time because it's a lot of dots but it's super fun. And then I did a little bit of touch up in those petals up there. I always get kind of finicky with flowers because flowers are, I may have mentioned this before if you follow all my stuff, those flowers are not my favorite thing to paint. Um, but so I get really critical about my flowers and I try to simplify it, but at the same time, I end up making it more complicated than it should be. So. That's what I'm doing here, adding yet another little touch up on those petals. And then adding a few more dots into the baby breath. Okay, so this is a fun part. A little bit of a challenge, but super fun. You're gonna need a napkin for this. And you're going to need a the 12 flat, and you're gonna need primary blue and the white. So dip it in both the colors and wipe it off with the paper towel. We're gonna dry brush. And when we're dry brushing, we don't want water on the brush, and we also do not want a lot of paint on the brush. So when I dry brush, I like to dip it in the paint and then wipe it on the paper towel so I know it's dry. Not a lot of paint on my brush. So I'm just going to do um, these streaks of dry brush strokes on the jar. So they're kind of going horizontal, but they're kind of contouring on the side of the jar. Okay, um, we can go crazy with this and fill it up all up, but we don't want to because it's glass and it's not completely solid in that color. So less is more here. So just a few streaks and maybe there's a streak that's kind of going curved and horizontally 
um, you can use the brush to kind of fill in some of the rim part of it and the rim in the back and you also kind of want to pay attention to your stems here so where would those stems be overlapping where would the stems be looking like they're behind, going inside the jar you want to kind of figure that out here and um, this is the point where we want the stem to be showing in the right places so it's not like an optical illusion painting or anything like that and this horizontal kind of curved stroke right there gives it a nice touch and then I did the same thing um, kind of inside it you kind of want to be careful you don't want to overlap those the stem there but I did that curved sort of st stroke in the back with the dry brush If you find that that flat brush is too large to paint those rims, um, so I'm dry brushing the rims, I basically just kind of um, outlining them again, you can switch to a round brush and that'll help you more. So I'm going to show you here, using the round brush to re-outline the rim in order to make it look like it's overlapping the stems in the right places. That um, gives you a little bit more control um, because it's such a small area. Okay, so next we're gonna do the ladybugs, the little ladybugs that are flying around. And um, naphthol crimson, Mars black and titanium white are the three colors they use for their ladybugs. And because the red is translucent, we gotta white out the wings first. So I'm gonna do the wings in solid white first. Um, so I did this kind of half circle thing going on with the wings. So I did, the wings are open, so I did um, kind of a curve smiley face shape. And then I did two curves to form the, the wings. And I'm using the 10-0 liner brush. It's the first time I'm using this brush of this painting. It's a the smaller than the four round. It's a, a very small round brush for small details. Perfect for the ladybugs. And um, so those are the two wings that are open. I have to wait for that white to dry completely before I can paint it red. I mean, you can get your blow dryer out and dry it real quick and then paint it red. But I'm gonna move on to the black part of the ladybug. So I did the, the body, um, so I did kind of a curved line, filled it in solid with the black, and then I did the head. So this definitely not a realistic ladybug by any means. Um, not even proportionate to the daisies because in proportion to the, the size of the daisy, these are huge ladybugs, but they're still super cute. And um, I did the, the head. So the head is um, facing the bottom. This ladybug's kind of awkward looking. And then I did the little antennae. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm going to do another ladybug in a different area of the painting, also flying. And I'm going to start with white again, so two half circle shapes for the wings. This one's wings are a little bit wider open. And then rinse my brush off and do the black again. So the, the body and the head with the antennae. So that white is not completely dry, but I'd say dry enough where the red can possibly be painted over it by now. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I am going to use the naphthol crimson and I'm going to paint the wings white. So this is going to uh, allow your red to be nice and bright because we have the white layer of paint. 
And I'd say if it wasn't dry, that red would be mixing with the white and it would turn pink. So use um, a blow dryer or something to get it to dry if you're not very patient like I am. Um, I'm impatient, so I didn't wait for it to dry completely, but it's not turning into pink, so we're good. I'd say that the red is um, definitely too wet for doing the spots. So I'm actually, when I'm done painting this one, I'm actually going to move on to a different step in this painting. I'm going to do some leaves on my daisies while my red is drying. Um, so for the leaves, I am going to use my 12 flat and I am going to double load it in the hooker's green and the white. So I'm going to get my 12 flat, I'm going to get it Make sure whatever colors on it is rinsed off. I am going to dip it in green and white. Um, just kind of load it in both of those colors and I'm going to do a leaf. So for, for the leaf, I'm going to start out with my the brush, the full width of the brush. I'm going to press kind of firm and I'm going to turn. Press firm and turn on its side. When you turn the brush on its side, your stroke becomes thinner. When you use the full width of the brush and put pressure, your stroke is thicker. So when we go from thick to thin, we create the leaf shape. Uh, this is very similar to one stroke style painting. If you've ever done anything like that, the folk art style painting, that's kind of what I'm doing here um, to form these leaves. So um, it's kind of all about the movement, the flick of the wrist. So you start out firm and using the full width, you twist it and it, the stroke gets thinner. And then, um, so I'm going to start this one. Um, so I start right there at the stem. So full width, twist and turn to create the shape of the leaf. And I'm going to repeat that for um, the rest of the leaves. And you notice that the green is so varied in color. That's what happens when we double load the brush. Um, we get different consistencies in the green. And I'm not even um, purposely loading the white on a certain side of the brush here. Um, neither the green. I am just dipping it in the white and dipping it in the green. Not mixing them all together. It's just an unmixed of the green and the white. Um, okay, so assuming my red is dry by now, it probably isn't, but um, actually what I did here was I just kind of uh, with the round brush made a little bit of a the line in the center of the leaf. That's what I'm doing with the green. It's hardly noticeable, but that's what I did. So just a little indication of some um, the veins that we see on the leaves. I'm not even going to do the, the veins that are branching out. I'm just going to do that one line in the middle. And that's all I did. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the dots of the ladybug. So I'm going to go back to the 10 0 liner and the Mars black, and all I'm doing is the little dots on the ladybug wings. And this is the last step of this painting. So essentially, this painting is finished and this tutorial is about ready to come to its conclusion. If you painted along with me, thank you so much. I cannot wait to see how your painting sh turned out. So share it with me on Instagram or Facebook or email it to me or upload it on Pinterest. And so thank you for watching this how to paint rustic daisies in a jar step-by-step -step painting acrylic tutorial.